I'm not going to have 120 years of preaching when I'm done. But imagine 120 years of warning people of the judgment of God and telling them that they needed to get right with God. 120 years of obeying God and what happened? Eight people believed it. When a year goes by here, I have to look back. I do this every year. How many people made decisions to follow Christ? How many people have been able to influence and get them back on the right track? How many sheep wandered away and we were able to bring back in the fold? I'll tell you what. If there was nobody for the year, that would depress me. Over a hundred years, a hundred and twenty years, and only eight... That would be depressing. In Hebrews 11.5, it says this, By faith Enoch was taken from this life, so they did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. Before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. So here's what makes sense to me. If I want grandchildren like Noah, I've got to live like Enoch. Now, I don't expect God to just take me. But, that does not excuse me or release me from walking as close to God as I possibly can. Enoch walked with God. As a result, in his lineage is a Noah. Noah who, who took the scorn of people laughing at him. Noah, who was building a big boat in a world where it had never rained yet. Understand that. He's telling them, water's going to fall out of the sky and the world's going to be flooded. What are you talking about? Water doesn't fall out of the sky. And 120 years he endured this. Preaching and building and being obedient to God. And part of the reason that there is a Noah is there was an Enoch who walked close to God. Noah was righteous in a corrupt time. He followed God's instructions exactly. He warned about the consequences of not obeying God. He was totally submitted to God. He built the ark. He got in the ark. Who would not want a Noah as a grandchild? Who would not want to live their life so that their grandchildren can they have that kind of commitment to following God. I want to mention another grandparent. That is uh, the, grand, the grandma of a guy by the name of Timothy. Paul wrote Timothy a couple of letters. Timothy was a young pastor. And Paul said this to him. I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. What greater joy could I have than to have someday somebody say to my granddaughter, Ashlyn, you are faithful to God. You know who you remind me of, Ashlyn? Grandpa Moore. Because he lived close to God. So here's what I need to do. I need to be ready to share at the appropriate time. My story of coming to Jesus when I was 15 and tell her about it and share what God has done for me in all the years that, that I have followed Him. I need to be a loving grandpa, play with her. Janine and I have talked sometimes. I wonder if we would have been able to install a kiss counter on Ashlyn's cheeks. At what point would they have hit a million? Be past that by now. So I need to play with her and love her. Proverbs 13.22 says a good grandparent leaves an inheritance for their grandchildren. Now a lot of times we think inheritance is what? Money. Money's not the answer. If you ever see the show How the Lottery Ruined My Life on TV, you should watch it. And see how a great influx of money sometimes breaks up families, causes people to... to uh, commit suicide, uh, it, it ruins their lives. It just ruins their lives. If you're irresponsible with money when you don't have any, you'll be irresponsible with money when you have some. 
Marvin Newton uh, has said something, and I've repeated it and quoted him a lot of times. If you can't live on $20,000 a year, you won't be able to live on $200,000 a year. Because it's not the money. It's the person. It's the, you're the same person. So an inheritance is, is more than just money. It's about leaving a good name. You know, I had a family in my church when I was in Dubois, Pennsylvania. By the time we got there, it was Mom, Nancy, and her kids. And Dad was out of the picture. But when Dad was in the picture, he was an alcoholic. He didn't pay his debts. He cheated people out of money. Uh, he was, he was a, a bum around town. And the only inheritance he left his kids was the, their last name. And so, literally, when these kids got into school, and especially they started getting older, they would find out their last name, and they would say, some people would say, are, are you so-and-so's son? Yes. <laughs> I know what you're like. No, 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 I, that's my dad. No, I know what you're like. It got so bad with the two oldest kids that when they got in high school, they had to go live with one of their grandparents. Here's what I want. When Ashlyn gets older and somebody meets her, so Ashlyn, Ashlyn Moore, are, are you related to Reverend Moore now to Tata? Yeah, that's my grandpa. I want them to go, good guy. I want to leave a good name. I don't want her to ever be ashamed of who she is. My dad used to put it this way, especially when I was a teenager and out running around, you know, having fun. Once in a while he would say to me, Don, don't do anything to bring shame on the family name. Our name meant something to him. And it should to you too. I don't want to get any bad habits that I don't want my granddaughter to have. I'm going to ask you that, ask that of you grandparents this morning. You do anything that you go, you know what, I do this, but I sure don't want my grandson doing this, my granddaughter. If that's, if that's the case, I'm a, I got two words for you right now. Stop it. Don't do anything that you wouldn't want your grandchildren to do. If you're doing it, stop. Now, if you're young and you're not even close to being a grandparent, think about this. Don't do anything you wouldn't want someday your grandchildren to find out about. Because the way you live now will help you turn into the character and the kind of person you are, and it will affect your grandchildren. If you want Noah's for grandchildren, live like Enoch, close to God. Let's pray. Lord, I believe the people in the Bible are there as an example to us, either on what to do or what not to do. There are some wonderful examples of the kind of people that we want to be. And there's sort of examples in there of people that we don't want to be like and we see what their decisions lead them to. Lord, I would pray in Jesus' name that whatever age we are today, that we would realize that the way we live, the things we do, the places we go, the things we say, the habits we have will affect the next and the next and the next generation. And so... Help us to make an Enoch-like life our goal, to live and walk close to you. In Jesus' name, amen.